Um, good afternoon. I'm Mark Hoffman. I'm working for IBM Z um, as a software engineer. And it's a pleasure for me to be here today, actually. Um, in this presentation, I will talk about my main project on IBM, which is Libvirt. And I will only talk about the administration of Kidney Rest via Libvirt. So, um, yeah. Uh, we at IBM C, we have really large systems with up to 30 terabytes of RAM uh, with the new C14 for the entire system and up to 16 terabytes per partition. So this allows us to have many guests start from parallel, for example, for test-driven development or regression testing and so on. So um, the main focus of this talk will about what happens if we stress Libvirt to its limit and how does it scale, how is the overall stability of it, and yeah. So my overall goal is to harden and to improve Libvirt. Disclaimer and trademarks, more trademarks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it all started with a performance bug that I got actually assigned. Um, what was reported was that during a start and destroy uh, operation, the Libvirt D gets stuck for about 30 seconds. And this can happen only sometimes, not that often, but it can happen. So, uh, get stuck means in this context that no a new RPC calls, so remote procedure calls were accepted, or any new connections could be established, and these things. So, the whole main loop of the loop with the gets stuck. Um, and during the investigation, it turned out that one can experience other issues um, when loop with the is pushed to its limits. So, that was the reason uh, for creating this presentation, and now let's get back to the agenda of this talk. So, in the first chapter, I will talk about the te used test setup, the used test environment, and the test scenarios I've used to try to reduce the bug. Then I will come to the uh, occurred uh, stability issues, and then in the third chapter, I will uh, give some uh, performance, uh, I will t talk about some performance issues uh, that were occurred. And at the end, I will give a brief uh, summary and an outlook where else one could investigate. Uh, I will use um, guest, VM, and domains in this talk synonymously. So now we will come to the use test setup. Uh, I've, I've used 64 uh, shared uh, calls. Um, actually, I've used a C14 for that. You can see on the right side um, image of such a C14 box. Then I've used 4 terabyte of RAM. I've used as distribution Fedora 28, as in Linux and Fast. Um, I have used in self built Libvirt, uh, it's pretty new. Then I've used in uh, for the 19 kernel RC, RC version. And for the QMU, I have used 3.0. For the used guest, I have used the following defin definition. On the right side, you cannot read it, uh, I think. Um, that's the Jinja template I've used for my test, uh, test script I've written. And actually, the fact about this guest is it had its used style kernel boot, so I'm using the host kernel as the guest kernel, and in combination with minimal initial renders that we, have, that we have built, and actually it's using BusyBox for that. And it has only one vCPU, it has only 100 megabyte of RAM, and it has an SLP console attached, and you can attach SCSI disks for that domain. Um, for the system configuration, I have used um, the parameters that uh, were suggested by Jens Bremer in his presentation at the KVM Forum uh, 2015, uh, pushing the limits south of gas per host and beyond. Um, actually, I have just increased the maximum number of U uh, processes the host can support can have the maximum number of threads the uh, host can have, then I have increased the maximum number of PTYs the host can have, and I have increased the maximum uh, open files for the host, and the inode files, and the limits for the libvirt D by for you. So, um, I've used the following libvirt D configuration, so I've used the defaults, except that I've increased the maximum number of anonymous clients, the ma uh, maximum number of client requests, then I've increased the maximum number of workers, because I have many calls, uh, up to, uh, I have used 64 in this case, and I've increased the number of priority workers for that. Um, 
I'm using the uh, default QM account provided by Lipwood D, by Lipwood, uh, except that I have increased the maximum number of posts because I have also tried to create two to the power of uh, 14 guests in total just because we can do it, two less. <laughs> so there's a uh, reason for that number. The other numbers are just big enough so I can create these guests. Um, they are no exact signs or something like that behind them. They are just big enough. Um, I've also increased how many uh, fi uh, open files a QMU user can have because the QMU processes they are running as the QMU user, so I have to adapt these while using the QMU account. Um, for the scatter list, I haven't used real scatter lists because I haven't had that many. And uh, because for testing, I'm using I'm used to use scatter debug mode uh, module for that. It was the usage of real disks, but I can still uh, try, for example, hot plugging off of host devices, path through, and so on. And so on. Um, at the bottom, you can read an example command line how to, uh, to create um, 8 times 8 times 256 uh, uh, SCSIs disks. And with the parameter dev size megabyte, you are saying, okay, one megabyte is spent for baking one of these SCSI disks. So for the read and write access. Um, how did I try to reproduce the bug? So actually I did, of course, the start and destroy uh, multiple guests concurrently. I tried to define undefined guests concurrently. I tried the start operation and the managed save operation for multiple domains uh, concurrently. And actually, with the first um, operation, I could trigger the bug, of course. It was <laughs> reported. So, but what else could possibly go, go wrong if I'm trying this? So, actually, many things. <laughs> so, um, there occurred a <coughs> deadlock across fork and the command exit. Um, I have uh, found it um, while running start and destroy in a loop for multiple domains concurrently, and I fixed that, but it meant. Then there was a race condition when uh, counting unauthenticated clients. Um, I have uh, pff, yeah, triggered this bug by a simple connecting and disconnecting with, with multiple clients to the Lipwood team. Um, so for that case, I have just used Versh, start and destroy, for example, it with multiple threads. And um, it resulted in a libvd that does not accept any new connections. So as long as you have an established connection, everything's fine. But as soon as you are trying to reconnect or establish a new connection, you will fail. Um, I fixed that as well. Then there were, uh, were some segmentation faults. A null pointer view referencing um, when libvd tries to reconnect to QMU processes. That's, uh, in that case, I have started multiple domains. Then I have restarted my libvd, and it turns out that uh, in this case, libvd has tried to uh, handle the QMU, QMU monitor events before the actual QMU driver was initialized. So uh, yeah, that led to uh, that resulted in the segmentation for the fix that as well. And then there was some classic double freeing. Uh, caused the segmentation fault, of course, and I uh, found it uh, by a simple define, undefined, same domain concurrently. Yeah, and I fixed that as well. So, after two, two days running, all these test cases, I got no segmentation fault. Everything was fine, apart from error message and so on, but these are okay. <laughs> yeah, some kind of. So, uh, back to the original bug, because now everything was stable. And now I can look at the performance bug, because it was only in performance bug, no segmentation fault or anything else. So uh, for that, I have to tell you something about the internals of Lipwood um, Lipwood has the main thread, and within this main thread, there's a main loop. So on the left side, you can see in some kind of Python 3 pseudo code um, the main loop. Um, there's a call. A call to listen for the QMU monitors, for the client sockets, and so on. And as soon as this uh, call returns, it will call um, the event call dispatch handles and other functions, but this function is the important one. This, uh, in case uh, there is an end of file uh, <coughs> event for the QMU monitor, um, 
there would be the function QMU monitor I uh, called. This function will call QMU process handle monitor into file, and within this function, uh, it tries to get the log of the domain, the domain object, in this case VM. And the problem here is um, the working thread. So the thread has the main loop. It just should just dispatch all the events and so on, request and so on to the uh, worker thread pool. Um, in this case, for example, is the RPC call destroy handled here, QMU domain destroy flags. Then it will try to get the log for the VM object. And then sometimes it will still hold the log and it will call uh, the, um, the dbus call, so just the dbus call with the timeout of 30 seconds. Okay, so um, there is so possibly a lock contention between this main thread and this worker thread. <laughs> this is all, already bad, so, but it gets even worse <laughs> as soon as this debus call needs the total timeout time, so 30 seconds, and this is exactly what has happened. So, um, I've just looked, I was interested in um, how often Hmm. Can it occur that this call, this dbus call, needs a total timeout time? So I've instrumented my code, the dbus call uh, code, and it has already uh, some functions for that, for tracing and so on. So I have used uh, dtrace and system tab, and I have measured how long it takes to return these dbus calls. Um, and actually, I discovered that it was either really fast, so about zero seconds or it needed the total timeout time. But actually, no real timeout occurred. So the reply was still valid. Even if the time it has needed 30 seconds, the reply was still valid. So no timeout, actually. And this was really interesting. So on the right side, you can see that. Um, here is a logarithmic scale used. So it's much higher than the 30 seconds, um, but it's still interesting. And then the other problem, of, um, so possible solution for that is, um, for that I have just, uh, at first I have looked at the, at the documentation of libdbus. Libdbus is used by libvirt for the dbus calls actually. And in the second line, I think the documentation says of libdbus, if you use this low-level API directly, you are signing up for some pain. And yeah, we do so. So we could either try to fix it with a libvirt. Maybe we are just doing something completely wrong. I'm not sure. Or we could use another dbus library, um, if it's possible and visible. And I did some tests with Python. Uh, there's a Python dbus package. This is using libdbus. And I've used gdbus within Python, and I did just multiple uh, dbus calls, and it shows up, uh, showed that uh, gdbus performs much better than the dbus, also much, much better. So it might be possible to use another dbus library, I'm not sure about that. And the most important uh, problem is, of course, never ever block your main loop. So. No worker thread should ever be able to block our main loop. Um, we should only dispatch the events in the main loop as, as fast as possible, mm -hmm. and then the actual event should be handled by the uh, by our thread pool or whatever. So actually, uh, Flexner has already talked about that last in the, at the last year's KVM forum um, in her talk <laughs> "Lessons in Running Lip for That Scale." She has also sent already some uh, patches for that. But there's still uh, much work to do until it's, it will be accepted. <laughs> so there were some segmentations involved within it, and so on. I have already fixed that, at least. But there are still some problems. Um, yeah. So more on performance because I've tried that. I got some feeling. Okay, sometimes it's some kind of slow if I'm using Lippert. So um, yeah. Therefore, I, I try to get some kind of feeling how fast can we go. Therefore, I have created a comparison between a direct command line boot of QMU versus libvirt. So, for the direct command line boot, 
I've used uh, the command line QMU system uh, minus uh, 390x x, uh, minus capital S. So I have started QMU with stop vCPU like Clifford it does. And so to be some kind of fair because I know it's really unfair to compare this uh, because Clifford does so much more than just a simple command line start, a simple start for process. Um, Therefore, I created this, or I have used this method, and connected via SoCAD to the QMU monitor and resumed uh, the CPUs, started the CPUs via QMP command. So it's similar to what Lipvert actually does. Um, for that, I have used no disk for guest. I have used self-written Python 3 test script for that, and it just script uses 64 threads. Yeah, I know there's a, a global interpreter log, but uh, okay. Um, it supports the method style command line and lipid. So, um, and the result of that is I've used the formula uh, ratio of i, i is in this case the number of guests, <coughs> t lipid of i means the time needed uh, for starting I guess via Lipvert and T command line of I means the time needed for starting I uh, guess uh, using the direct command line. Um, actually, I'm not sure why it happens, but there's some kind of bathtub effect, as you can see here. Um, I'm not sure why, but the main point is um, if you are starting QMU guest directly per command, uh, via command line, it's yeah, 20 to 30 times faster than uh, by means of libvirt. And that was quite interesting for me, uh, and therefore I have just created an on-CPU flameware for that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so where does, the, where does the time go? Okay, uh, libvirt, as I have told you before, does so many things more. For example, it prepares the host, uh, creates a VSOC device, uh, host dev devices, uh, prepares the files, it prepares the QMU process, set up the C groups, the namespace, SE Linux labels, app armor profile, handles the QMU capabilities, uh, does auditing, does logging, and so many things, so much more. Um, okay, then I've created an on CPU flame graph for uh, the operation defined. Um, for that, I have find guests for 60 seconds, each of these guests uh, with 20 uh, SCSI disks attached. And the result of that is 96% of the time, of the on-CPU time, I have to mention that, uh, is only used for forking. So I have need, that's pretty much. So um, this function is called within VillQ email caps cache lookup. And this function is called within the domain dev validate device iterator. So uh, what happens here is for each device, uh, the VLQ email caps cache lookup is called the function, and this function um, doesn't fork. I have created the same CPU on CPU uh, flame graph for the start equation, and it's still 78% of the time that is spent for forking. Um, I have also used here, I've uh, started guests for 60 seconds, each of these guests uh, with 20 SCSI disks attached, and yeah. So, what does the QMU Caps cache lookup do? Um, it was introduced because probing the QMU capabilities is expensive, so there was some caching introduced for, uh, for that. And so, the function doesn't look up, and for the QMU capabilities, for the, Q, the domain in the cache, and it validates that these uh, QMU capabilities are still valid. Um, for that, it needs to um, check or to verify if DevKVM is still accessible as the QMU user. And for that, it's in fork. Uh, it forks and drops its user rights, changes the user to QMU, and tries to read and write access on DevKVM. So um, the question is, do we really need this validation for each device uh, of a domain? Because the more devices uh, the domain has, the more expensive it is. And so possible improvements here are 
we could query the, the QM utilities once for each task, for example, for define task, start task, whatever. And I have sent in patch views for that. Uh, it's still under discussion. I will send in a uh, second version for it. <coughs> and what it also avoids is that actually, or currently, it can happen that we are starting the final operation. So it will call the function WQML caps cache lookup. And you will get the QML capabilities version A. Then um, the QML binary will change. So you will, at the next step, you will call um, the QML caps cache lookup um, another time. And this time it will return a QML capabilities version B. But instead of invalidating everything what we have done before, we are still continuing with these new capabilities. <coughs> and in my opinion, this is not the right way to deal with that. So this would be also avoided. Um, you could also use VFOG, last and extract, and dedicated program for that, because that would be much cheaper than an expensive fog of the whole liberty. Then um, I wanted just some performance results. Um, so I've, I'm using as a baseline um, the libbird with this, using this commit. And then I'm using an improved clipboard using the same version with my patch use applied. So I have calculated the ratio of i, i is the number of guests, equals to t baseline of i divided by t proof of uh, i. And the result is something like that. So for the definition, if you are defining uh, 256 guests, each of them with uh, 16 SCSI disks attached, you get the speed up of the factor 127. So uh, it's amazing, in my opinion. And here you can also see uh, the more devices you have attached, the uh, higher is the uh, speed up. So it's almost linear, as you can see here. I, have, uh, I did the same for a simple start question. And it's still 26 times faster when you are trying to start uh, 265, uh, 56 guests, each of them with 16 SCSI disks attached. And yeah, and you, you can also see here it's also linear. And it's still impressive, in my opinion, the speed up. So, um, what can be optimized? So. We shouldn't block our main loop, so we should uh, investigate into this and come up to a solution for that. Then we should try to optimize the QM capabilities usage, as I've shown you, and we should try to fix the 30 seconds DDoS problem. Then, uh, what else, where else could we investigate? Um, we could analyze the off-CPU times because I think the locking is not optimal at all within Lipboard. So I think we can uh, achieve an improvement if we analyze the off-CPU times. Um, we could also try what happens for more sophisticated operations like live migration or what will happen if we kill QME processes randomly, for example, during live migration and so on. So, <laughs> questions? Yes? Wait. Is the original bug already fixed? No, unfortunately, unfortunately not. No. <laughs> Another question? Could you, could you go back and repeat the question? Just... Oh, okay. He has asked uh, if the original bug is already fixed. And no, it is not fixed. Unfortunately, <laughs> but other bugs. So, just in the meantime, thanks for fixing all the other bugs that you found. <laughs> That's always appreciated. Just a quick question: If you can go back to the first graph when you compared um, the just starting came with command line. Yep. Yeah, that one. So that's just a simple. Um, 
simple gas with no device, no disks, nothing exactly. to be mentioned, right? I can show you the, uh, the use key and your command line for that. It's command, yeah, this is the yeah. command line I actually used for that. So it has an SLP console, um, it has an QP as a shame your monitor, and it uses the other command yeah. language and stop the CPUs. Thank you, I just missed that. Okay. specific command line you were using, is there anything specific to S390 in that or could other developers help you do something similar on Intel-based systems? S L P console. Yeah, <laughs> of, not just the command line, just all of the startup you are, you are testing there. I, I expect most of that it would be architecture independent, but yeah. could there be anything which would be different on other architectures? Um. Yeah, the, uh, the controllers that were used for the SCSI disks. So Lipwood will create uh, SCSI controllers for that, and that depends on the ar architecture. But I have tried that uh, on x86 as well, and there's also an improve uh, as a speed up, similar to S390. So, I asked before because I was pretty <laughs> sure I'm affected by the same bug with a bit different source. Yeah. So, to give you some priority, it's not only a rare debug issue. If you pass through plenty of PCI GPUs, okay. you will hit it. Hmm. So, if anybody's planning passing through more than like 30 GPUs, you will be blocked by the same thing. <laughs> so, it's more important than random debug issues. Yeah. I'll get in touch with you because, yeah, we should work that together. Is we should never ever block our manual. Yeah, so, on your page 17, I think, yeah, yeah. from QMU process stop, I can show you another plus 30 seconds. Exactly, so okay. all of these uh, QMU monitor events will be trying to get the lock. So not only monitor and the file yeah. events, so that's a problem. Hi. The tests you have executed seem uh, quite architecture agnostic. Is there an idea, a plan to create some continuous integration based on this? So, uh, yeah, future parts so. can be caught before they become an issue? I hope so, yeah, definitely. It's on the way. Can we use your hardware for it? Because it seems pretty big there. <laughs> no. I, I, no. I cannot run that on my laptop. Yeah, but uh, I'm just going to you sell your big box. So just, just call. Back, back on your uh, first graph again, if you could just wherever it is. Um, you, you, you were comparing um, Libvirt against native. Yes. So that's that's before you've done any of your improvements for the. For the forking problem, what what would that ratio be after you've got your fixing? Um, Did you almost, measure that? Yeah, but almost equal because I have no uh, SCSI disks attached. So it's mm, the more devices you have, the more is the speed up. So yeah, I have not measured that, uh, but I, yeah, I can try. I could try. No, I was just wondering if there's any other big. After you fix that problem, is there any other big causes of the difference in startup time between Libvirt and NATO? Yeah, we should analyze that. That so, would be interesting to know. And off CPU times, of course. So I think that will be really interesting to uh, look at this. Yeah, I mean, on, on the uh, CI testing, there's definitely uh, definitely scope for doing performance regression testing to make sure. Because, I mean, that's that example of the iterating over the <coughs> capabilities cache, that's, that's moderately recent. Performance regression. Yes, we, we didn't do that kind of stuff in the past. Twenty seven, nearly seventeen. So at the end. if we had if we had performance regression testing, that would yeah. help us spot those kind of Definitely. mistakes. <laughs> so, any questions? We have time. <laughs> so. The, 
thirty second debus thing. Yeah. Did you find anybody mentioning uh, something like that there with many, someone else using debus for some other reason? There are many bug reports uh, for the debus if you're looking at the website. So, um, and I'm not sure if it's the maintainer, but someone is saying, just use another library. This one, this one. So, I'm not... <laughs> this, this particular bug, though, isn't anything to do with... Lib, it's not libdbus's fault. I mean, what happens is we, we register... libdbus needs an event loop yes. to, to get its replies, yeah. and we register ourselves as the event loop for dbus. So, it's sitting there waiting for a reply, because our main loop is blocked, we never get a... We never give the reply to Dbus. I'm not sure about that because I have used the second event loop just for Dbus and it still occurred. But I'm not sure about that. There could I be two different We should look at two it. different issues there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no more questions? Then thanks for your attention. And